So I was uh, I was chatting up a lady uh, recently, and I was like, yeah, you know, I'm a pro wrestler. And she's like, oh, you must go, like, so many cool places. And I'm like, yeah, like, a warehouse, um, you know, parking lot outside, like, a camera store, you know, dance halls in, like, nowhere, Texas, um, you know, just places like that. Attention wrestling fans, you're in the blast zone for the only podcast where we blow kayfabe wide open and let you know what it really takes to become a professional wrestler. Presented by America's Academy of Professional Wrestling, this is the Buckle Bomb and you're about to get blown up. Welcome back, wrestling fans. I am Buck Bomber, and this is the Buckle Bomb, hosted by AAPW, the only podcast where we blow kayfabe wide open and let you know what it takes to become a professional wrestler. We are joined in the bomb shelter this week by the returning Zeke Rose. Yo, 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 yo. Woo! Woo! And ducking and covering with us is Lady Bird Monroe. Howdy, y'all. You don't have to. You don't have to force the accent. We break kayfabe here. What? I, I'm not faking the accent. I'm Texas. I'm Texan. You're not that. I got a little southern. <laughs> yeah, that's Texas. Texas. All right. All right. All right. So, how's everybody doing? How's everybody doing? Oh, fantastic. Go ahead. Great. Yeah, feeling good. Do you want to like get in the ring? Do you want to move your chair over a little bit so you don't have to reach? Yeah. They only got one mic for uh, Zeke yeah. and I here. Real we, fancy joint. We duetting today. And we're we're doing our best here. We're doing our best here. Is this your uh, COVID prevention mic right here? <laughs> Making people share this. Yeah, same it's, mic. it's to protect myself. We're bringing people together. Yeah, no, it's bringing people together. This is a, this is a bonding experience. And so, diseases. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. I'm disease free. Yeah. Ditto. So how's how's wrestling been? Great. Fantastic. Um, lots of stuff happening out there in the world of Zeke. So, and lots of things coming up, brother. So I can't wait. But uh, we're going to keep that on the hush for right now. But yeah, so far so good. I oh, mean, I was just about to ask. I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. like, what kind of stuff? How about you, Ladybird? Things are good. Just getting back into the ring, starting to wrestle again. Um, been practicing. I have a match coming up on July 30th. A little nervous about that after uh, my ACL surgery. So mm-hmm. we'll see. But it's good. I'm, I miss wrestling. I miss this sport and getting to compete against like awesome people. So. All right. Right. Yeah. So where are you going to go to compete? Uh, Wills Point, Texas. And how far away is that? Uh, that's around the Dallas area. So from Austin, about three hours. Okay, just like three hours. Yeah, not too bad. Oh, yeah. In, uh, in the words of Booker T, she's looking real good <laughs> in the rain. Mm. Damn right. <laughs> so speaking of, uh, speaking of travel time, we do a lot of traveling, huh? Oh, yes. We do, uh, we do a lot of traveling just for about like uh, maybe like 15 minutes of actually doing something and then uh, quite a ways back, you know. But you make good memories by doing that, getting to be on the road with people. And right. I like that experience personally. And, and that's what this week's episode is about, traveling. Because uh, if you're going to be an indie wrestler, <laughs> and especially if you're going to be a pro pro wrestler, you're going to do a lot of traveling. A lot of driving. So, lots of road time. Brother. Lots of road time. Lots oh, of road yeah. time. Uh, Zeke, how, where, what's the farthest you've ever gone out? Uh, the farthest I've ever gone out, um, I personally hasn't, haven't made it past the state yet, but, uh, pretty close to the border. Um, I would say Crystal City, Uvalde, mm-hmm. um, you know, I, but I do a lot of traveling between San Antonio, here, Houston, and Dallas, but yeah, Uvalde's been the farthest so far. Trying to get something out in Cali, so We'll see what we'll see what's coming up in the next month or so. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, but Texas is such like it's the center of like wrestling. That's where most of this stuff is. That's why people move to Texas is to wrestle. So it's also we're just, in a good area. It's also just a huge state. Like you yeah. think about it, it's like you drive four hours and you're still in the same state. Like any other state, you're gonna be like two states over by yeah, then. Most of them anyway. Right. It's a it's a big state with a lot of places that are really spread out. Yeah, that's so true. You know, I used, so I used to be in a band. I used to tour a lot. Um, cool. East Coast a lot and getting between like Philly, New York, you know, 
Connecticut, uh, even, you know, North Carolina, you know, you can get there within a matter of hours. But Texas, like... Takes a minute to get out of. I I, I've definitely traveled, like, what, five, six hours just to, like you said, wrestle for, like... 10, 15 minutes, <laughs> right? And then go home. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's that's basically you know how big Texas is. It's, it's crazy. I forget who said it. I, I'm gonna. I'm just gonna say Willie Nelson said it. Uh, somebody said you don't get paid to perform; you get paid to travel. Um, that's about right. That's right? about right. Yeah, sounds good. Right. So, Lady Bird. Uh, how far have you gone to wrestle? So the furthest place I've been is New England, so up north. Um, that was a long, was long flight. Uh, I had to take like two flights. Dang. But yeah, it was pretty cool. It was nice. Uh, it was just a, it was a bunch of matches. I had like, I don't know, five, six matches that day. But it was worth a, it. Was oh, what was that for? Uh, it was just a, a promotion. They actually haven't put their stuff out yet. It was a whole, it was really a whole show that they had that they're still taping together and um, doing production and editing it. So it's not out yet. But That's interesting. So you have pre-taping experience. Yeah, which is really fun. I got to do a bunch for that. And didn't you do the same thing at AEW Dark? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but luckily that was only uh, in, where was that? That was tour- that was by Dallas too. Garland, yeah, Garland. I thought you went to Florida for that. No, nope, no, nope, I was lucky. I got to just travel back to where kind of I live, so I got to stay at home with my parents. And oh, nice. Easy. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> and here, I thought you went to Florida. I picked you because I was like, Lady Bird's <laughs> gone the distance to Florida. You know, uh, maybe one day. Maybe that'll happen soon. We'll see. Oh yeah, it's gonna happen. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right. Did you drive there for that? For uh, dark, uh, no, of course. You think I took a plane? Yeah, <laughs> for three they, hours. They didn't give you a plane <laughs> ticket. No, no, I don't think AEW pays for uh, travel for their talent for their dark talent. Oh, yeah, I think you have to make it. You have to get there on your own, and then also book your own um, like stay as well. Oh man, I thought you got that. I thought you got that VIP treatment. No, you do get a good paycheck at the end of it, though. Right, so right, of course, paycheck. of course. <laughs> um, so how about uh, how about um, the the constant struggle between uh, getting that paycheck and uh, paying for gas? Oh my goodness! Oh, you make that you you ask the booker to you get the paycheck and then ask for gas on top of that. That's what I do anyway. You know, I should start doing that. <laughs> yeah, you should. Um, I'm just like in the midst of just like increasing my rate. To be honest with you, yeah. Um, like a couple months ago, I'm not going to say the promotion. But, dude, I only got paid, like, 10 bucks. Oh, my God. <laughs> $10. Uh, That's insulting. That oh, barely like, paid for my tacos. Yeah. I ate that day. I, I know I know who you're talking about. <laughs> I'm just like, 10 bucks, dude. Yeah, man. It, it was it was not a bad – it was such a bad experience. And so that really, like, put to, in perspective about, okay, how much am I worth? You yeah. know, like, how much – like, depending on my skill, you know, you know who I am, basically – um, you can get but, hurt in the ring too. Every time you get in yep. the ring, you have the chance of getting hurt. Is ten dollars worth it? And, and honestly, like seeing that happen to you because I was in that match that you got hurt, um, I thought about that too. And I was just like, you know, I'm putting my body at risk every night. And I mean, what's it worth to just you know get a nice little rate and some gas money? You yeah, know? yeah. Um, right. Instead of just you know wrestling for like you know the twenty bucks for that fifteen minutes. I mean, yeah, I charge it to the game because I want to get my name out there. Like, mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. that's that's the name of the game for me yeah, right now. Is, I agree. Who is Zeke Rose? Like, I want people to know who I am. So I'm willing to take that sacrifice. But now that I've been doing the road thing for a minute and I see the the struggles between, you know, maintaining my job, you know, Monday through Friday mm-hmm. and my relationship, you know, at home with my, my, my girlfriend and my family, that sort of thing. So all this factoring into, you know, what I'm what Increasing your rate. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Right, right, absolutely, absolutely. Because, uh, you know, I, 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 I've had to tell people, you know, I'm like, if you can't pay me more, I go. can't keep doing this because, like, like I'll do like I'll do like once at a loss. I'll, I'll do once at a loss, and then I'm just like, hey, man. So, uh, yeah, traveling out here uh, kind of costs more than I thought it would. Um, yeah. <laughs> 
It's a little stressful. I'm I'm unlucky though because women do get paid more usually um, from from what I've seen and heard uh, when we travel. So I'm lucky for that. But I've definitely been to shows where I didn't get paid much, and it is just about getting your name out there and getting people to know who you are, getting that match experience because that's really what we need is going against different competitors and just working different people and Mm -hmm. being at different places in front of different crowds and working that crowd differently. So. It's all just for the experience. It really isn't for the money yet, but one day, right. hopefully. Yeah, no. Yeah. I, I mean, I do it because it's fun, you know? I'm like, Same. it's fun. I need to get paid. I need yeah. to make sure that I'm not losing money on this. Yeah. yeah. Mm. And plus, I mean, we're, we're sacrificing so much time, you know? Absolutely. Especially since, you know, like we do live in a big state like Texas, right? So um, there are going to be opportunities where we have to drive like, what, five, six, seven hours, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Um but like I said, it's it's like Lady Bird mentioned, it's a part of the game, you know, like we have to play it. But at what, what point do we draw the line and say, hey, you know, we're 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 not only using our time, you know, we're sometimes spending our own gas money, you know, to get places. Um, where do we draw the line to say, OK, this is this is what, uh, you know, I'm worth now. This is what makes this, you know, trip or this you know worth it. card beneficial mm-hmm. for me. Yeah. You know? So. Absolutely. You ever got anybody, you ever try to get your buddies booked just so you have somebody to ride with? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you for know, sure. You know, um, I, I haven't done that, but I definitely have been on the re- recipient end, you know, where, you know, Keanu will be like, hey, man, come come with me to Uvalde. Or, you know, Aaron Atlas will be like, hey, I have a show here. You know, like, I'm always down for the ride. You know, I'm, I've always been a guy who likes to live on the road you know right. I did it for 10 years in my 20s when I you know did music so this is no different um, but I do find that you know being able to travel with your friends being able to you know have those experiences together the talks that you have on the road yeah um, being able to work all that stuff out even you know coming up with matches and like you know angles you know gimmicks like that sort of thing like those are all the things that i like being on the road and talking with the, with my friends so it just makes it worth it and you know at the end of the day you get to go wrestle and you know put on a banger match and then go home and drive home with your friends and talk about it on the way home. yeah right you ever have to drive home a long way after a bad match though <sighs> yeah yeah <laughs> Yeah. Been on the road alone before as well. And yeah. No. Oh, alone is the worst. Yeah. Driving back yeah. alone, just having nothing but your I thoughts. Just, and not trying to fall asleep. Oh, yeah. Case. That's like the worst. I don't know, man. I'm, just, I'm the opposite. You know, I feel like that's the actual time when I could just like put on the music that I want to put on. Right. Oh, you yeah. know, like I'll be like, all right, now I can jam some freaking Metallica or like. Iron Maiden or whatever music that I know that my friends don't normally listen to and I'll just crank it up and just like jam it and you know I mean if I do have a bad match you know I'll I'll use that to you know get that out of my mind yeah think you know? think through it too think it's through like thinking it. time yeah yeah I mean not done better not not to stay on it but you know just kind of in the night on a positive note because yeah you can get stuck in your thoughts yeah. you know driving home what do you think? Oh yeah, for sure. Um, but usually, I like yeah, I like to bring a friend along with me if they can be in the match with me. Um, that's usually the goal. But I have been on the road by myself before if I can't bring a friend or my partner. Um, and yeah, just not trying to fall asleep. That's, <laughs> that's yep. my biggest that's problem. <laughs> yep. Because every time I every time I gotta like do like a four hour plus drive. I always end up with people who just sleep. Oh, I'm like, I'm like, oh, that's rude. <laughs> I'm like, hey, uh, unless you okay. trade off, because I've been to Oklahoma. We did that drive together, and we would, one would sleep ha- on the way back, would slept for a couple hours, and then we switched, and then the other person would sleep. You <laughs> know, so it was good. Teamwork. Yeah, yeah. See, I, that always seems like enticing, but I'm always like. I don't want to let you drive my car because I don't know what happens if you get in an accident in my car. The same way. Though. I mean, you have insurance, right? Yeah, but I'm like, does it count if somebody else is driving? I mean, why do you got to tell them? Just switch real quickly. I don't know. You just yeah, just do the old switcheroo. Yeah, the old little switcheroo. <laughs> <laughs> we don't encourage that here. Yeah, we're- 
<laughs> also, uh, um, endorsed by Zeke Rose or Lady Bird. <laughs> when we're coming back, all from, all. <laughs> when we're coming back from like anywhere near the border, and we got to go through checkpoints. Oh yeah. I like being the guy in the driver's seat because I can go. Oh yeah. Hi, I'm I'm a person who looks a certain way. Hello. Because oh. <laughs> um. Oh uh, no cap. Um, oh, when uh, when me and uh, Leroy Brown rode separately, um, I uh, I remember because I was with Michael Arrow. We drove through the checkpoint. You know, I was like, "Hi," and they were like, "Okay, yeah, go." Um, we're driving through. We look over. And we see Leroy, you know, next to his car, talking oh to uh, oh. talking to the, you know, border patrol. And I'm like, that's messed up. I'm like, and then I remember Michael Arrow says to me, "What do we do?" And I'm like, "What do you mean? What do we do? We leave." No, you could have just waited, like pulled off. I'm not gonna. What am I gonna do? Just wait for him. Make sure he's okay. Or, no. I mean, I mean, I texted him a bunch. I'm like, dude. And did you good? And did you good? Yeah. Did you good? Yeah. And he, they they eventually just let him go. But I'm like, why are they making get out of the car? That seems ridiculous. Because he's black. That's why. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Insane. We get real here on this podcast sometimes. He uh oh, he um. Man. Dude, I I can tell you plenty of stories where I've gotten pulled over and it just became like a really crazy ordeal. I hate that. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's the worst. <laughs> but uh, luckily he made it out, you know. Yeah. Right? right? And you were there to check on him, right? Kind so. of. He kind of was. <laughs> he was like, "Let's well, get out of here." Well, there's no place to stop. They I mean there's just there's just road. Like, what am I going to do? Stop now, and block make, everybody you else? You look suspicious too if you like stop. Pull yeah. Yeah, 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 that's true. So. Yeah. Don't want to put more heat on him, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Right. Uh, but yeah, um <laughs> I remember the the whole way back. Uh, last time I went to Laredo with him, I was like, I was like, I got this, I got this. I'm driving this time. <laughs> and I was like, Hey, diddly ho, there, Border Patrol. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Oh man, can I use that? Does that hold the same weight if I were to use it in that same voice? No. No. <laughs> Try it. Go ahead. What was it? Hey, hey, diddle what? Hey, diddly ho. Hey, diddly ho there. <laughs> hey, diddly ho there. It's gross. Uh, ho ho. <laughs> yeah. But man, just every time, every time I got to go through that, uh, like a checkpoint, I'm just always like, I'm like, I don't have anything in my car. I'm, I'm, you know, a U.S. citizen, et cetera, et cetera. They have no reason to stop me. But every time I'm just like. That's how that works. Right. We're all like that. <laughs> no. Uh, Same. Hmm. But yeah, no, uh, wild and crazy things happen on the road. Um, has anybody got any particularly fun stories? Hmm. Yo, man, I can could, I could remember, I think this was like WrestleMania weekend. And the whole weekend, okay, so me and, me and Keanu just went up there on a whim, you know, just to, you know, talk to people or whatever. Uh, this was back when I was, you know, really trying to network. And it was the night before the second night so it was Wrestlemania night one we didn't go uh, we went to a couple you know indie showcase shows and Keanu was just like you know what I gotta sleep I gotta need I need a bed to sleep in I was like what we've been sleeping in the car for like you know the past two nights oh wow so he finds this hotel and he's just like alright yeah we're gonna stay at this hotel whatever it's like a Motel 6 but this motel was just like so crazy um, Crazy, like, like, like dirty, like, like, like motel dirty. Like super ghetto. I think I got into the, the hotel and I saw like a fingernail and oh, like some, some like. Did it clean it? Uh, like, rappers like on the ground. I'm just like, man, like I, I, I didn't feel, I, I felt so, so weird. Could you even like, sleep? Did yeah, it even help? Oh, yeah. you were able to sleep? Okay. Yeah. I mean, I was able to sleep cause I was tired, you yeah. know, but I, at that point, I was just like, man, I would have rather slept in my car extra like night because nobody bothers me. And so, I mean, it was hard to sleep because, you know, people were arguing, you know, outside. Oh, wow. I freaking hate that. I honestly Ugh. felt like my life was going to be in danger. I was just like, all right, now I got to turn on hood, hood mode, Zeke. <laughs> I don't know if like if I gotta walk to my car and get a suitcase and somebody's just gonna like come out and try to like stab me or oh, something. Uh, but it was really questionable. So at that point, I was just like, man, I, I've heard horror stories of you know people in crappy hotels and stuff like that. But at that point, I just rather sleep in my car. That's the thing. It's like nobody bothers me. Nobody. Like I just find a nice little parking spot and just you know. Doesn't have fingernails the, everywhere? No fingernails. Yeah. At all. No fingernails. No, like, empty condom wrappers. Like, oh. No. Like, on. the place smelled like 
cat piss everywhere. Mm. It's, it was great. It was it was fun time. Sounds wonderful. <laughs> so so yeah, if if you're looking at spending life on the road, um, you know, if you don't have like a really great job and you're just trying to save money, you're gonna end up staying in crappy hotels like that. And you or if know, it's far enough and the booker is willing, they can you can ask for that. Or yeah, paper, if you meet some somewhere. some cool fan or whatever, or you have friends. Oh, I don't know about that one. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> Hey, you know, there's people that I've that I've met, you know, uh, you know, prior to you know going to shows or whatever, you know, really cool people, and and that's and that's that's basically how I got by. Whenever I you know spent time on the road, uh, even when I played music, you know, um, you know, you meet somebody, they're they're cool. You end up staying. Sometimes it goes well. You stay well. at their place? Sometimes they don't. Yeah, I do. Heck oh yeah. my god. The only so so here's another story. This was this was back whenever I was playing the music, right? And I met some cool dude at the show, me and my friends, and we were just like looking for a place to crash because literally we played a show in Chicago and could not find a place to stay. So we ended up crashing in a parking lot at a mall outside of Chicago. So we're in Missouri and guys was like really cool. And so he says, like, Yeah, you can stay at our place or whatever. All right, cool. So we're just like hanging out or whatever. And Deuce is like getting super drunk and he ends up like talking about, you know, people disrespecting him or whatever. Then he pulled out a shotgun. Oh. And I was like, all right, now it's time to go. We gotta leave. It's we gotta dip. But that's that was the only bad experience that I've had. I mean, usually nobody messes with me, you know, I'm a big guy, you know, like if anybody tries anything, I'd usually just break their necks and <laughs> yeah, like, how many of the, how many times did that mm. happen? <laughs> a, lot. <laughs> a lot. A <laughs> lot. Oh, goodness. I don't know. Whenever I'm on the road, anytime I see an animal, I'm always just like, yeah, I, I could take that with me. <laughs> <laughs> like, I was at a rest stop once, and there was just this, like, chihuahua, and I'm like... Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm like, I could take this with me. <laughs> as long as it's alive. But yeah. yeah, no, it's fine. It's fine. Um, stopped at a Loves once, and then there was a cat in the parking lot, and I was like, Aww. I could take this with me. <laughs> I love cats. Little cute cats. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I guess my road stories aren't that, cr- or the ones I can share aren't that crazy. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think. I'm like, God, what do I have that's like vaguely interesting? Uh, I can't tell that. I can't tell that. Say. Can't tell that. You know, because there is the thing about uh, what what's said in the car stays in the car. Oh, yeah, definitely. That is a golden rule. Definitely. Shame on anybody who breaks that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that does make this a lot more boring. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, pro wrestling's wild. Pro wrestling is wild. It's a, it's a wild world, you know. And and just by what I gra- I graduated like what a couple months ago and just really started going after this thing. Was it Was it just a couple months ago? Yeah, it was it was in March. March 9th. Oh. Okay. <laughs> it feels like longer ago. I know, right? Cuz it, it feels like it because I have been doing some stuff a little bit before I graduated, but it just goes to show like how big the world is, you know? Yeah. Um, how big the world is. I mean, talking with people, you know, from different states, you know, uh, wanting a book or whatever, it really brings in perspective, you know, how much opportunity is out there, you know? And, and yeah, I mean, nobody wants to be stuck on, you know, the local scene, you know, I mean, unless that's your, you know, MO. Then I mean more power to you, right? Um, I'm not hating on that, but I definitely want to you know try to you know make a good go at it while I still you know have some g- good years left under my belt. Mm-hmm. So uh, you have a lot of time. Are you kidding me? <laughs> yeah, what are you like 25? Yeah, good years left. You have so much time. I'm, I'm 30. Let's just say that Let's, I'm 30. That's really? A, that's a pretty strong 30. Yeah, very very strong 30. And my my legs do feel like they're 25. But right um, that's a different story. But still, I mean, you see the world and you see uh, how much opportunity is out there. and You just want to just take it, you know. So, I mean, if you're looking at becoming a pro wrestler, um, there is definitely opportunity out there for you. I don't care who you are. Uh, I don't care, you know, what where your where your uh, physical uh, capability is at. I don't care where your skill is at. Um, as long as you can, you know, connect with people and people always look for something new, there's opportunity out there for you. So. Absolutely. What do you think, Lady Bird? I don't remember the question, to be honest. <laughs> 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 I 
was kind of thinking of like since we were on the conversation of traveling, like where would we want to go? Because there's, oh. uh, I'm still so new at this, and not even you know like a year in, a tore my ACL, so that oh. made me stop. But um, there's so many places that I, I want to get to go and wrestle in, like in different countries and up north a lot more because there's a really good scene up there. Mm-hmm. And I don't know, there's there's a lot of places. I've always wanted to wrestle uh, or. Or manage in Japan. Oh, yeah. I've, either oh, my or. gosh. Yeah. Um, but I, I also think to myself, I don't have anything to offer over there because all that... My best thing is I talk, so I'm like, gimmick. Yeah. I don't know, like a Japanese, so... <laughs> But I think that you have a good, really good gimmick, and that I feel like is kind of that's a, a big thing is having a big gimmick over there, and right. being able to show that and tell a story with your gimmick. So I think I don't know, it could work. Yeah. Just I got to someone. I got to just find somebody who will uh, who will want uh, <laughs> sponsor you, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Sponsor me, get me over there. You know? Same, and the UK would be really cool. Yes, mm-hmm. but yeah, same. I would want to be like sponsored. I would pay. I guess I w- maybe would pay my way over there and do it but that would be just so expensive to do that Mm -hmm. Uh, japan japan is definitely a bucket list for me or mexico would be cool mexico would be cool Ah, that's a lot closer too yeah but japan would be like a dream like i could i could die a happy man you know if i could do some some time in japan uh africa too you know um i've I'm definitely interested in. It might be an opportunity for that pretty soon. I mean, I I know it's out, I know it's out there. That's why I'm putting it out there. Because um, I I am my so I know my family is originally from Cameroon. Like that's where we descended from. So it'd be cool to to you know wrestle in front of there, get to know those people, that sort of thing. Of course, I'm I'm pretty sure I'll be hated just because you know I'm the American or whatever. That's good. Then will, you can I play that wear, game. Up. Yeah. I will wear that with pride and definitely you know make my moment there. Um, the UK for sure. Um, I've I've definitely had some some things uh, come up in in the wind about it, so I'm definitely keeping my you know ear open to that. But UK would be awesome. Yeah, anywhere in Europe would be. Sick. For sure. Germany. For sure. I don't know. There's a lot of cool stuff. What about Canada? Hell yeah. Oh yeah. Canada. So I thought you'd been to Canada. No, my girl Gigi has. She's from Canada. That's what I that's what I was thinking about. Because I'm like, you you you're pretty good pals with Gigi, right? Yeah, I mean I'm sure that I could get an opportunity to go. Just got a bugger about it when she's ready to go back home. When she's got to not have a torn ACL at the time, right? <laughs> yeah, when well, no, they don't have a torn ACL. It'll be stronger at the time, so you'd be good. Right on, I agree. Also they have a... Isn't, do they have affordable health care in uh, Canada? I mean, it's free. <laughs> so, but I mean, I could, I'm could. i still in America. There would have to be a lot of uh, transitioning. Mm. But it is what it is. I've already paid for the ACL surgery. <sighs> Can't do anything about it. Congrats. At least you don't have debt. Well, I mean, I paid half for it, my insurance. I mean, don't I have to pay that? I don't know. Let's just not talk about it so I don't get in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, man, yeah, dude, wouldn't pro wrestling be so much better if we never had to worry about getting hurt? Right on, yeah, yeah. But, oh, man, no, go for it. We'll always have to worry about that. That's never going to not be a thing. People are, get hurt over and over and over again. You just watch people who are signed, who are just get a belt and then get hurt, mm-hmm. like CM Punk, for mm-hmm. example. Like, that is just, that's the business. It is what it is. Yep. You put your body on the line. To, to make these moments right, to like make these stories seem lar- larger than life. So the risk factor, yeah, dude, Every before every match, I get kind of worried and scared myself. But um, I feel like the more I begin to work, the, the more I feel like I have control over it, even though in, in, a, in the real world, we know that we all have a time clock, right? Like everybody's It's going to get hurt at some yeah. point. Yeah. Right. Like, great. So, as Zach Taylor would say, tell us in class, you know, everybody is on the time time limit or time scale. Some people's time comes earlier than others. So. I always heard from uh, Steve-O that we all have a bump card and, uh, oh, yeah. you know, we're punching holes into it. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, man. As we speak, like, I'm pretty sure I've taken bumps at this point that, I'll, that will affect my life. Later, down later the down the line. God, yeah, isn't that the isn't isn't that just that 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 like dread in the back of your mind? It's just like I'm gonna hurt for the rest of my life. 
in one way or another because I've been doing this. I'm thinking positively and I'm going to just continue to do yoga and I'm going to try to avoid that because right now my body doesn't hurt other than, you know, my knee getting all messed up. But like, honestly, it doesn't hurt that bad. It just aches sometimes. Yeah, but I've definitely taken bumps outside of the ring. Like, uh, oh, on, on like con- concrete? On the concrete. Then don't do that. Mm-hmm. <sighs> Say no. Uh, uh, you know, I wish I would have known that at the time, but you know, like you, you make you make certain decisions and you begin to reflect on them after. Yeah. Them, so. after. That's true. That's true. Like, um, I uh, I caught Michael Arrow on a dive um, a couple months back, and I was like, I was like, okay, just roll back, roll back, and I'm like, eh, I'm catching him up kind of high. Oh, It'd be kind of no. weird to roll. I'm like, I guess I'm just gonna bump. Hit your head. And no, no, no. Oh, I, I, but hearing you bring up that uh, <laughs> getting hit in the head, um, that's a uh, that was a different time. <laughs> oh, I've had one of those. Yeah. Um, uh, no, but I, I bumped uh, onto the concrete, and I, I heard this sound I'd never heard before, and I was like, was that, like, my spine, like, shattering? <laughs> um, and, like, you know, I'm down there selling. I'm down there selling, and the whole time I'm like, can't wait to get up and check if... Uh, I can walk still. Yeah, check if I can still move. Uh, hey, God, yeah. At least you're able to sell it, though. Right? Yeah, because it's real. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Um, Absolutely. Yeah, I've had a concussion in a, a match on AEW. I got a concussion on that really? power, that power bomb. <laughs> yeah. What? And I like got done with the match and I like walked over to Gigi. I'm like, so how'd it go? <laughs> that was that one that you took from Nyla Rose? Yeah. Uh oh. And then I took another one right after. I remember I saw that and I told Kelsey, I was like, they killed, they killed Lady. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> Destroyed. <laughs> God, concussion. First concussion, too. Concussions are scary. Um, that was a bad month for me. Tore my ACL and then got a concussion. <laughs> but also, like, I've been I've been in sports my entire life, and I have, like, continued to, like, work or whatever sport I was doing, continue to do the sport with injuries. So I'm so used to, like, working with injuries. I mean, at the end of the day, it's, it's up to your discretion, right? Yeah, exactly. If you want to yeah. wrestle on an injury or not. And I felt fine. Like, I, I mean, felt fine. you look like you moved fine. I've never had a concussion happen, but I've I've been involved in a match where a concussion happened, and jeez, I I think what's scariest about it is like trying to talk to them afterwards, mm-hmm. and like you ask them what the date is, and they just look at you like, and it's just like they don't know what's going hey, on. Hey man, yeah, <laughs> it's like you know your name, but uh, you know what what's what day is it? Yeah, just staring at me. What month is it? Have, just, y'all, have y'all ever had a concussion? Me personally, no, no, no. Oh my god! I mean, I've I've even played football, and I mean, yeah, I've, I've gotten rocked, but I've never like had to, you know, sit out a, a game. Go to the doctor about it. Yeah, mm-hmm. I like to think I'm pretty tough because well. I am. <laughs> I used to I used to be really scared for concussion anytime I'd hit my head here. Um, we used to have a, a girl named Blue on staff. Um, and every time I'd be like, Blue, Blue, I think, I think I got a concussion. Can you check me? <laughs> Just every time. Um, I've, I've since learned to check myself mm-hmm. like a big boy. Um, but uh, yeah, no, that's uh, that's one of the big fears. Yeah, you can. That's that's one thing that you can't be getting a lot. Like with concussions, you know, you can you only have a handful of those where things go south. Yeah, do you ever do you ever do you ever like have one of those moments where you worry that you have like brain damage? Oh, all the time. Well, Dude. if you don't get a concussion, then you're good. Yeah. Are you sure? I think so. I mean, I think I'm, I mean, how, how would you not get a concussion if you hit your head hard enough, or you had? Why would you think you had brain damage? Is what I. I don't know, just, just little brain damage. I mean, you take bumps, you take hits. Or whiplash, maybe, sometimes? I mean, yeah. Of course, it's... Okay, it's, fair, yeah. It's going to move, right? So, I mean, there's always that risk. I mean, yeah, yeah, fair. It's always, like, little things, like, like if I mess up when I'm talking, I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> it's happening. <laughs> That's the brain damage. <laughs> or um, one thing that I've, I've noticed since I started, like, four years ago, I, I noticed that I, like, whenever I'd be doing reps, I'd always skip 12, and I'd be like... That's a sign of a concussion, actually. Like, you will skip something <laughs> multiple times, though. Well, just for years? I don't know. That's uh, Have I been concussed for years? Just one Perhaps, really, maybe. Just one really, really, like, mild, long concussion. Maybe you have a weird thing with the number 12. That, too. Um, what about you, Zeke? You ever think you have brain damage? <laughs> I mean, 
only time is when I like step into a room and I'm like, dude, why did they come in here? Dude, yeah. I think I think that's just a normal person thing. Yeah, maybe yeah. I can say that. I've been doing that my whole life. You know, just walk into walk into the kitchen. Okay, I know like, I came in here to it. grab something. I do that, and I have stairs, and that's the worst. <laughs> Walking upstairs and be like, now what did I come up here for? Um, and then going back down, and then be like. Ish, that's what it was. <laughs> Especially after you work out, like leg like day, you're just like going up the stairs, and you're just like, dang it, I gotta go back down. Yeah. All right. Uh. So, uh, all right, it's time for ABP. Always be plugging, Ladybird. What do you got? What does that mean? What are you asking? Me? Plug. Oh, plug. Oh, okay. What do you I'm, think I said? I'm not hip. I don't know. I didn't know if this was like a game. Um, I, you can follow me on Instagram at Ladybird Monroe. Um, I'm also on Twitter, and I think I it's the same thing, but with the in front of it. Or vice for, or those might be switch. You know, you'll just look up Lady Bird Monroe. You'll find me over there. Um, and I think that's it. That's all I'm on. You got any uh, shows coming up? Yep, uh, July 30th in Wills Point, Texas, and that's it for now. I think. Okay, Zeke. So you can find me on Facebook as Zeke Rose, um, Instagram Zeke Rose Loading or Zeke underscore Rose underscore Loading. <laughs> Um, you can also follow uh, my girlfriend's shop. That is the Two Roses Trading Post on Instagram. Um, there you can find our sh- the link to our shop in the bio where you can buy your own Zeke Rose t-shirt. I got some new ones, um, 80 style, golden era style, you know, Hulkamania brother. Um, and Iron Rose Strength. That's also my girlfriend's uh, training uh, business, which I do train with, and I did lose a lot of a lot yes, of weight y'all. and then put on a lot of muscle. So if you're looking to change your life, look up my girlfriend uh, reinventing Kelsey Rose on Instagram. Nice, nice, nice. Do you guys ever watch Wrestling Society X? Say what? What? Yeah, come on. Wrestling Society X. Mm, I've heard of it. It was a it was a wrestling show, um, and for some reason they thought that it'd be great to like broadcast in thirty minute bits. Um, but one thing it was known for was explosions. Just anytime anything would happen, <laughs> there'd be an explosion. Just like awesome. they had a coffin match, threw the guy down in the coffin, coffin exploded. Yes. Um, they they'd throw guys into barbed wire. Barbed wire would always explode. explode. Like it ends with a cage match. Like the 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 whole thing ended with a cage match where. Anytime they would touch the sides, just explosion. How did people not die? That's what I'm wondering. <laughs> um, Maybe they did. They discovered it. A lot of people have said, you know, um, <laughs> that the explosions were just unsafe. Um, yeah, I would imagine. But like, uh, nothing more hardcore than that, though. Right. But yeah, man, that that promotion really blew up like a <laughs> buckle bomb listener because this has been the buckle bomb, and you have been blown up. <laughs> <laughs>